Hi, in this video we will explore contextual word embeddings in Spacey. The word embeddings available in some Spacey language models are typically static. This means that the vector representation for a given token remains the same regardless of the context in which the token occurs. To exemplify, the word capital can stand for a city or for money, depending on the context in which the token occurs. The static word embeddings cannot capture this distinction because they always have the same vector representation. In other words, the values of the 300-dimensional vector remain the same no matter what. Ideally, we would like to encode information about the context in which a word occurs to draw out these differences in meaning, which is an issue that has been addressed using an architecture named transformers. The transformer is essentially a neural network architecture that is capable of encoding information about the context in which a given token or another linguistic unit occurs. In this way, the transformers have enabled learning contextual word embeddings, which also encode information about the context in which a given token occurs. This has also improved performance for traditional natural language processing tasks, such as part of speech tagging or syntactic parsing, but the downside is that the transformer architecture is computationally very heavy. Let's start exploring the transformer-based language models in Spacey by loading a language model for English, which we assign under the variable NLP underscore TRF. If we examine the pipeline attribute of the language object, we see that the first item in the pipeline is a transformer. This transformer outputs vector representations, which the subsequent components of the pipeline use to make predictions about part of speech tags and syntactic dependencies, for example. Let's define a string object that contains some text and feed it to the transformer-based language model and store the result under the variable example underscore doc. This gives us a spacey doc object with seven tokens. Spacey stores the output from the transformer into a transformer data object, which is available under the custom attribute underscore and the attribute trf underscore data. Let's explore the transformer data object in greater detail. The tensors attribute contains a Python list with the vector representations generated by the transformer for individual tokens and the entire doc object. So if we examine the first item in the list under index 0, what we have is a single batch of 11 vectors which each have 768 dimensions. And as mentioned above, these are the vector representations for the individual tokens. The second item in the list contains the vector representation for the entire doc object, which in this case consists of a single vector with 768 dimensions. If you've been paying attention, you might be wondering why the transformer outputs 11 vectors for a spacey doc object with seven tokens and the answer to this is that the transformer tokenizes the text differently. To explore this issue further, let's see how the input text was tokenized for input to the transformer. This information is available under the tokens attribute of the transformer data object, which contains a dictionary. If we examine the value under the key input underscore texts in this dictionary, we get the input to the transformer. To begin with, the input text begins and terminates with a tag that indicates the beginning and end of the input sequence. But what's really interesting is how the token Helsinki has been split into three distinct tokens. The token Helsinki is not present in the transformer's vocabulary, so it has been broken down into three subwords. These subwords exist in the transformer's vocabulary, 
So their vector representations are used to construct the representation for Helsinki. This is simply a trick to optimize the vocabulary of the transformer, which are usually trained on massive amounts of data. So the size of the vocabulary has to be controlled somehow. The subwords that make it into the vocabulary are those that occur frequently in the training data. You can also see that the letter G with a dot on top is used to mark white space in the input. To use the contextual word embeddings learned by the transformer, we need to align the tokens used by the transformer to the tokens used by Spacey. The alignment information is stored under the align attribute of the transformer data object. In this cell, we first fetch the token Helsinki from the Spacey doc object under example underscore doc. And as you can see, this token is at index zero. We then use this index to access the align attribute of the transformer data object under trf underscore data and its data attribute. This gives us a numpy array which can be used to index the arrays stored under the tensors attribute for individual tokens. So in this case we know that the vectors 1, 2 and 3 contain the representations for the subwords that make up the representation for the word Helsinki. In this cell we define a custom component that aligns the transformer and spacey tokens automatically and makes the vector representations from the transformer available under the attribute vector. Let's move ahead and define two examples that use the word capital in a different sense, that is to refer to a city and to money and feed these example sentences to the transformer based model under NLP underscore TRF. And thanks to our custom component of the pipeline, the transformer representations are automatically aligned with the spacey tokens and stored under the attribute vector. Let's retrieve the token corresponding to the word capital from both doc objects and assign these under the variables city underscore trf and money underscore trf. If we use the similarity method to calculate cosine similarity between the 768 dimensional vectors for both of these tokens, the result shows that the vector representations are not identical. This is because the vectors encode information about the context in which the word occurs which allows the representations to distinguish between the two different meanings of the same word. We can compare these contextual word vectors to the static word vectors that come with the large language model for English in Spacey by providing the same data to the large language model that we created in the previous video. If we fetch the token corresponding to capital from both doc objects and compare their cosine similarity, the value will be 1.0 because the vectors are identical. This is simply because the static word vectors don't encode any information about the context in which a word occurs. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks.